Aloha and welcome to our show today. Uh, this this uh, morning we're going to talk a little bit about the past, present, and future of Mauna Loa's watersheds. Uh, with me today are Lila Nori and Kimo Franklin, uh, both uh, here today to share a little bit about their experience working in Mauna Loa and, and uh, living there. Uh, so Lila is a former executive director of the Hawaii Conservation Alliance. She's also the project manager of the Watershed Snapshot Project. Uh, she's had about 20 years of experience working in Hawaii, in Micronesia, the Caribbean, uh, and has been working on natural resource management and conservation issues, particularly within a community setting for, for those two decades. I'm really happy to have you here, Lila. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much, John. It's great to be here. And also here is uh, Kimo Franklin. Kimo, it's good to see you. Kimo is a lifelong Mauna Loa resident. He's a, I always see him at the, the Safeway, <laughs> so I can attest to that. Yeah. He's also active, very active, a community leader, uh, active in many community projects, focusing on community restoration, cultural restoration, land management, uh, both from Malka to Mackay. Uh, and, you know, Kimo is an advocate of getting the community involved and uh, making sure that the community has a voice in land management decisions, in this case, in Mauna Loa. Uh, Kimo, it's great to have you here. Thank you oh, for thank being you. here. Aloha, John. Aloha, Lila. Good to be with you guys. Right. Thank you. Well, super. Well, what, we're going to just go ahead and start, if you uh, both don't mind. Uh, my first question, we're going to speak to the past first. So my first question is for you, Kimo, being the resident uh, historian on Mauna Loa. Um, can you tell me a little bit uh, about the history of Mauna Loa's watersheds, and specifically, um, maybe how they've changed in the past 50 years? I know that you worked on a on a poster, on a snapshot, and mm. maybe you could speak to that poster, that snapshot a bit about how things have changed in the last 50 years. Yeah, well, I, I think we have a, I'd be glad to, I think we have a poster up on the screen now, but yeah, so the Mauna Loa area, you know, has changed uh, fairly significantly over the last 50, 50 years, 50, 60 years. Uh, basically gone from a rural type setting, a lot of farming, a lot of ranching, uh, a lot of open space, a lot of uh, pervious surfaces to, uh, to a highly suburbanized area nowadays um, with uh, you know a lot of residential that's come up uh, since the early say the early 60s um, um, just a big growth in residential population commercial centers have gone up shopping centers um, more schools have come into the districts mm -hmm. so there's been a fairly significant change in regards to uh, the, the watershed out there um, you know we I think looking at the poster one of the posters we have about 26 percent um, impervious surfaces, which wow. is you know a little bit over a quarter over of the quarter. whole area, but you know that's still three quarters of the area, which is more open space, mm -hmm. uh, deep in the valleys, uh, sides of the hills, up on the mountains. Mm -hmm. So we still got a fair amount of uh, watershed out there that hasn't al necessarily been altered by by residential development and so and forth. Kimo, can you speak a little bit to the place names of Mauna Loa and maybe how uh, the terms and the place names that people have used today might be different than in the past. Yeah, there's been some changes. Uh, you know, we like to, you know, it's, it's kind of nice, in my opinion, to dwell on the, on the traditional names for the area. But for instance, Mauna Lua is one, you know, commonly known nowadays, AKA Hawaii Kai. Uh, Hawaii Kai is a development name that came in when the, when the Mauna Lua area was developed. But, you know, it's, it's nice, I think, too, for, for residents and, and community people out there to know those traditional names, those original names for those areas. Uh, Mauna Lua, you know, versus Hawaii Kai. We have the valleys, you know, Hahaioni, Hahaioni, Camilo Nui, Camilo Wiki, Ka'ala Ke, the ridges. Uh, Mariner's Ridge is a more of a development name that came up uh, when the houses went up there, but originally Kalua Nui Ridge. Uh, we have other valleys within uh, the Mauna Lua area that are adjacent to Mauna Lua, the Ahua of Mauna Lua itself, but you have Niu, mm. Kuleo O, Wailai Nui, Wailai Iki, uh, all these areas, Wailupe, all these areas kind of funnel into Mauna Lua Bay. Uh, so we have various valleys, uh, watersheds, Ahupua, that consist of what we kind of maybe call and sometimes generically term Mauna Lua, a broader region for the mm. area. Yeah. And you mentioned Kuapa Pond. Mm. Uh, what kind of changes would you say have occurred in the last 50 years re regarding the pond? Yeah, that's another example. Kuapa, fish pond, Kiahupua, Mauna Lua, is a traditional name for that fish pond, uh, the largest fish pond in Polynesia. Uh, and um, you know, 500 some odd acres. Uh, it was a very large fish pond. It wow. was a cool pond. Basically, um, 
AKA, that's another example of a cha name change known as uh, a marina now, more so. Uh, it's, you know, they call it Hawaii Kai Marina, but, you know, using Kuapa uh, or Kehupua Mauna Lua is, is good for the community to do. You know, it was originally kind of just a wall, sea wall, that Kuapa right in the front of uh, mm. Mauna Lua. Right. And it was just a little, little way where you could kind of transverse over it before you could even take vehicles over it. But that area Makaha. changed. Makaha. Yeah. Several Makaha were in that area. And uh, that area has changed right there. Areas were dredged out in the channel just off Mauna Lua Beach Park. Um, Kuapa was dredged out. A lot of that fill was used to formulate a couple of residential islands in um, uh, um, in, in the Hawaii Kai Marina or uh, Kuapa Fish Pond. Mm. Also the whole area, the whole parking area, for instance, where you have your yeah. boat ramp and so yeah. forth, that's all fill right. that was taken from all of this dredge and, and formulated. So this area has expanded out there now. You got a highway and you got adjacent areas which were basically part of the fish pond in days yeah. gone by. No, I, I, you know, I remember growing up hearing stories from my mom and dad who both were raised in the bay and uh, they talked about how my, my mom would get flooded out. She was in Portlock and they would flood out and they couldn't get to town. She couldn't get to Punahou to school. And mm. My dad who was in, uh, in uh, Wailupe Circle used to land even Kona crab and, and fish when they were hungry just from you know going off the bay and yeah. certainly things have changed. It's changed, yeah. And I, I remember as a kid going out there, my dad taking me on excursions out there in the early 60s when I was a little uh, little kid and uh, just kind of having these little, these vague memories in my mind of that area with the fish pond out there and then seeing all the machinery come in and wow. uh, what really stood out in my mind as a kid, I loved wow wow, look at all this machinery, you know, and it's like <laughs> with Kaiser's cranes and his yeah. dredging, everything was pink. And wow. it was because his wife's favorite color was pink. Wow. <laughs> and wow. and those are one of the things I remember as that, that tran whole transformation was taking place. That was kind of one aspect, that fish pond of a change, what, the hap what occurred with that fish pond going from that rural area where you had this tremendous fishery resource um, uh, and fish production. Mauna Loa Bay was tremendously productive in regards to a fishery. So was our estuaries and our fish ponds, which fed, uh, which were part of that whole area. Uh, but it changed at that time, and that's one thing that I kind of remember that change starting mm -hmm. to occur when mm -hmm. I was real small and just having some, some uh, vague memories in my mind of, of see. I remember seeing that. Yeah. Wow. Well, you're a real living treasure to be able to share some of those perspectives uh, in the last 50 years and being able to to help us uh, get perspective on that change that's occurred. Well, I'm not that big a treasure. No. Though. Well, <laughs> yeah, you're big enough, right? <laughs> All right, at this point, I'd like to maybe think a little bit about the future, uh, the present and the future. So let's let's talk at first about the, the, the current uh, condition of Mauna Lua's watersheds. And uh, Lila, I understand that uh, as the former director of the Hawaii Conservation Alliance and as the project manager of this community watershed snapshot, uh, that you've been working with folks like Chemo on helping communities understand the health of their watershed, including in Mauna Lua's. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the Hawaii Conservation Alliance and about this snapshot process that you do with community watersheds? Sure, thank you so much, John. We've been really lucky. Um, the Hawaii Conservation Alliance is a collaborative partnership mm -hmm. of organizations from government, academia, cultural resource groups who have been working since the 80s together mm. at the intersection of all of their missions. We have a list of all the names, but there's actually uh, over 27 agencies working wow. together. 27. Yeah, and, and in that brainstorming and that strategic work that we do together to mm -hmm. try to preserve ecosystems, um, conserve ecosystems, both Mauka and Makai, they've been wanting to know how can we best evaluate the health of Abua'a or of watersheds across Hawaii. Mm -hmm. and, and perhaps we would work with communities to do that and not so much only resource managers. Good idea. Mm -hmm. um, but try to work together with communities yeah, more in a co-management effort. Uh, so that's where the Watershed Snapshot pretty much stemmed from, a group called the Effective Conservation Program, trying to figure out where is all the data that would help us determine that, and how can we put it all in hmm. one place to make Determine it the health of a the, watershed. Of a watershed, okay. and there is a lot of it. Hmm. If we can put it in one place together, then hmm. we can more, you know, likely use it to benefit the action that each community is really taking forward and moving forward. So with the snapshot, it's an assessment. It's an assessment of all that information combined, working with communities in participatory um, activities mm -hmm. and consultations together across all of the islands, mm -hmm. but in particular with Mauna Lua and a couple other pilot sites to develop these communication platforms you've been seeing across the screen um, that are more meaningful, that show value of their aupua'a, but also show um, 
some numbers and values as to how healthy certain resources are. Mm -hmm. So, Lila, as se. a project manager, you've used the word snapshot yes. a few times. What, yes. what do you mean by a snapshot? Um, the best words we've found to describe a snapshot is place-based selfie. So Please we take our selfie. We take our picture and we smile. Right. And what would that look like? A very quick snapshot of the day or the minute oh, okay. that you're experiencing, like an Instagram post. And this poster we made is sort of that place-based selfie oh, of how healthy okay. the watershed is, mm -hmm. with only looking at a few um, metrics or indicators of what mm. that would mean. So working with with uh, Chemo and Elizabeth Riley and others, you all created a snapshot or a, a selfie for Mauna Loa. Is that right? Exactly. We got together and talked about what was most important, what they valued, what they wanted to know more about. We matched that up with existing information from the resource managers okay. and even from Kapuna from your area that helped oh, provide I some local. Now. That's, That's right. Really beautiful. Some local knowledge in there. The Kapuna were supporting us with information that was okay. so important. So you have Kapuna information embedded in this snapshot, this selfie here. Exactly. If we zoomed in, and I'm not sure if that's possible, but Auntie Laura has a quote there about her. Auntie Laura Thompson. Yes, okay. Auntie Laura Thompson um, from Great. a long Newway. time resident. Mm -hmm. Old Paniolo mm -hmm. Mahine. Try to just capture, like you said, a place-based quick snapshot okay. so that over the years we could do another one and start seeing the changes oh, based on okay. what's happening upland and in, in the Makai area. Perhaps these numbers, the needle would shift. Hmm. And that's the opportunity there is create a few snapshots and then start looking at the comparison hmm. over time. Great. And Kimo, you were involved in this process, is that right? Yeah, it's a four-year process, okay. um, and it was funny. I was joking one time going, yeah, I wasn't involved in the beginning, you know, <laughs> I, and, then I, and then I look back at the pictures and I go, oh, I guess that is me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but it was, yeah, it was, you know, it's, it was very long. Hey, it's, Kimo, you know, we well, lose our memory. It's okay. Well, yeah, we do, but, uh, it, but it was, yeah, so that jogged my memory. I go, right. yeah, now, now, so sometimes you need things to jog your memory, and yeah. so that brought back things that we, we talked about in the mm -hmm. very beginning meetings four years ago. I guess it's going on five years now, but we've, um, you know, so uh, we, we, that, was a, that was a very, uh, it was a great experience. I was very happy, uh, very privileged to be a part of that, uh, working, you know, not, I, I, with a conglomeration of people from the Mauna Loa area, at least in regards to the snapshot for the Mauna Loa watershed. Um, you know, as, as, as Laila and John, you were alluding to the, um, the, the Kupuna, but, you know, the old time, the old time families, but also a lot of the community members who have been active in restoration and stewardship projects in the area, say, over the last 10 to 15 years. You know, tremendous, uh, they participated in this process. They brought tremendous resources to the table during this process. Mauna Lua Fish Pond Heritage Center, Hawaii, Kai Hui, Huli, Malama Mauna Lua, um, amongst others. Just, you know, they have all have their unique areas they work in and their specialties, but it all ties together. And to be, have them to come under this, uh, this partnership mm -hmm. and this, this watershed snapshot to work together on this was really, I think, in my opinion, something that was very beneficial and, and good for everybody involved. So in, Kima, you, you're speaking a little bit about uh, the benefits of being involved in this process of looking at your, your, ahwa, your, your watershed and trying to understand what's happening. Can you give us an example of uh, something that you learned that was something unique or special about the current conditions of Mauna Lua's uh, watersheds that you think folks who are watching might be interested in learning about? Yeah, I, well, I think, you know, Mauna Lua is, is unique in, in, in one way in the, in, the, in the fashion that it's become, as I was talking about a little bit earlier, it's, it's gone from a rural environment to a highly suburbanized environment over a 50, 60 year uh, span. Um, and, you know, in the last decade, there's been an awareness that's been generated in the area mm -hmm. to look, there's been a lot of changes out there. Some of it has had a negative impact in certain ways in regards to the natural uh, areas and the landscape, the, uh, the ocean, the, the areas in between, and the Malka, the Malka areas, the valleys, and the mountains. Um, but it's amazing, to, in my opinion, and something that I think is, is unique uh, for Mauna Lua is that, in fact, that we are currently a suburbanized area, mm -hmm. but we still have so much, and I commend the community members out there for everything they've been doing and formulating these stewardship groups um, and really working the area in engaging with the broader community, not just the people in Mauna Lua, but people from everywhere to come in and learn about the area. It's been very educational, having schools involved, um, and just, just you know, stewarding and providing education, hands-on learning, working closely with schools, educational groups, uh, various organizations to 
inform about the area, its past, its present, some of the unique issues we're facing. And with all of these groups working in various areas, Makai, Mauka, in between, in the fish ponds, at the, at the wetlands, at the, 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 the uh, Bahipana, the Heiaus, so on and so forth, bringing it all together. And while to me, if you can do that in a highly suburbanized area like Mauna Lua, AKA Hawaii Kai, you can do it anywhere. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these areas that we worked with, uh, we learned a lot from them, Haula, Punalu'u, Haina, the, a lot of these other areas where they're doing some of these kinds of things too, they're in a rural environment still. Mm. They're not near as suburbanized as we are. So I think that's one of our unique points is that we're doing this in a suburbanized area and while we can still pull this off. And I think some people come from outside and they see the community groups doing this out there and they go, wow, who would have thunk it? Yeah. They're doing that stuff where all the thought was before, I thought it was just houses out there, but yeah. wow, look at this and what they're doing, taking care of these last vestiges of uh, the past and, uh, and trying to improve the area of Maukatumakai. You know, it's interesting that you point that out because I think during the, the last uh, several years, it's, it's been really, as you point out, it's been really uh, heartening to see not just the community coming out and building these partnerships, but really the next generation. Mm. And I think in part because of uh, uh, the Thompson, Ohana, and, and the leadership they provided to, uh, through the Polynesian Voyaging Society, you know, the, during the worldwide voyage, uh, the Malama Honua uh, initiative, I know there was a lot of youth that had become very actively involved in Mauna Loa, and it's been just fantastic to see that level of engagement that you're talking about, despite, as you say, it being a fairly urbanized environment and yeah. suburban environment. It's, I, th I agree with you that it's been very inspirational. Right. Yeah. Speaking more about, uh, you, you mentioned uh, Haena and uh, Punolu'u. So I'm, Lila, could you maybe speak a little bit more to these other watersheds, the, the the Haena uh, snapshot that uh, Kimo referred to and the Haula Punalu'u snapshot? Sure, John, I'll do my best to speak on behalf of them, but of course we wish they were here. Um, many people know Haena on the island of Kauai is one of the most remote aupua'a of all of the Hawaiian Islands as far as um, habited, habited by mm -hmm. people, and yet not very many people live there. Mm -hmm. However, there's a million tourists who pass through there every wow. year, and so that just amps up the impacts to their environment in ways that somewhat they can't even control. So that's um, something similar to Mauna Loa, that there's a it high is. visitation. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. They have, despite being so remote, they're also one of the most studied Aupua'a because there mm. are a number of researchers and scientists and community members heavily involved in its management, such as the Limahui Preserve mm -hmm. of the National Tropical Botanical Garden and Hui Maka Ainana Omakana, mm -hmm. a nonprofit group there led by Presley Wan. And together. Oh, they here's the hot and oh, snapshot. Good. Excellent. So you can see those um, actually wow, has two rivers there. that are yeah, perennial. It's very beautiful. Um, and they have some of the most native forest cover than, than some well, other outlaws. You can see some of the real differences between the Haena and the Mauna Lua snapshot here. Absolutely. One big difference is they have a designation in the Makai area of the community based subsistence fishing area okay. where the rules started in 2015 and that's just monumental for even the whole state. So they already have some active management happening in the Makai, some active management happening in, Ma in the Mauka areas. And, and you so mentioned the Punalu'u and the, the yeah. Haena, uh, the, uh, sorry, the uh, Punalu'u and Haula Yes, Haula, Haula to Punalu'u snapshot, which we do have a poster to, um, is a more obviously remote area on the mm -hmm. windward side in the Koalau Loas, mm -hmm. and becomes oh, almost... there it is. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, many of you know it to be the source of most of the water for drinking that supplies all of Oahu. Oh, okay of Oahu, yeah. exactly, right. and so critical, um, but very limited in resources when it comes to how many people actually live and work in um, taking care of the aina on a day-to-day, full-time basis. It relies on active community members, which there are many as part of the Haula Community Association. They've done amazing work there, despite, you know, so, so far from town and, and somewhat remote, but really important when it comes to their upper Mauka and their Makai areas for subsistence even of people who live there. So, Lila, one thing I noticed between the various snapshots that you all put together is that some of the information there is about the, the biology, the, the plant and animals and the fish, and then some of the information is really about the culture. And I saw some ahu and some heiau. And so these snapshots, they cover both the biological and the cultural, is that correct? Absolutely, John. Good um, observation that we focus as much on 
the people who live there mm -hmm. and the socioeconomic aspects of that, such as how many people uh, volunteer for resource management okay. projects, which schools might be involved, what organizations might be supporting them. Um, that was as important to communities as, you know, how much native vegetation percentage you have and that oh, sort of thing. And remember, the communities chose these metrics themselves. So they told us and we worked with them to finalize what was most important. And socioeconomic was just as important as those biophysical. So you're saying the communities natural. get to choose what they measure for their snapshot. They help choose and recommend. Okay. And HCA um, right. went through that process with them to make sure that was the list. That was really smart. And that's where these little icons come from, is so from communities working together. Kimo, when you were, when you were doing this snapshot, mm. What, what are some of the differences or similarities that you found between Haena and Punalua and, and Mauna Loa? Um, well, I think water was one of them. Everybody's uh, quite concerned about the water, the water quality. Mm -hmm. uh, having, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things going on with uh, the water, uh, water runoff, uh, how it's affecting, you know, why is that occurring on land deep in the valleys, up on the hills, the erosion, uh, wow. you know, various things, pesticides, just things that, you know, occur up in uh, the watersheds, up in the deep valleys, up on the hillsides, uh, versus things that occur in the, in the areas where there's residential, more suburbanized, and then how is that going, flowing with gravity, and how is that sure. affecting what's happening down Makai in the oceans? And I think that was one of the things that, uh, that really struck me is, you know, we all were, Similar mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, but there, but at the same time, there were these significant differences between from area to area, and everybody's got their own unique set of challenges. And wow. at least from Mauna Loa's perspective, um, you know, being water quality, water runoff, you know, when you there's there's a number of issues, but uh, affecting that 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 need to be tended to in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but I think water quality and water runoff, you know, when you talk to people, when you go to community or um, meetings and so forth, you know, the, everybody agrees that uh, water runoff um, and water quality is a, is a big, a big item. And so that's maybe something we've got to take a closer look at. Wow. Um, you know, I, I think uh, one thing I'm taking away from what you all are saying is that these watershed, these ahupa selfies, as Lila called them, um, really give you a lot of information quickly about your home, or in this in this case, your 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 home or your watershed that you're that you're living in, and that's uh, I think that's very powerful in the the time that we live in. Yeah, and I want to commend this whole process over the last four years, and being able to to associate and and meet and work with uh, people like the people from Punalu Haena, uh, Haula, um, and just being able to learn from them, uh, learn a tremendous amount of things, what uh, issues they're facing, uh, and also hopefully we were able to provide valuable information for them to, to use in their areas too. So it's a learning thing, it's something that we can all learn from each other and, and apply as necessary in our specific areas. Fantastic. Yeah. Well in the last few minutes that we have together, and again I want to thank both of you for sharing both the past and then these, this snapshot process, the current uh, status really of the health of these watersheds. In the last few minutes I wonder if both of you could speak to uh, the future uh, and uh, maybe you know, what types of initiatives uh, uh, are, are getting underway now? And, and uh, for anyone that's watching the program that might have an interest, how would they get involved in some of these initiatives? Maybe I'll start with you, Kimo, if you want to speak to Mauna Lua in the future. Yeah, so, you know, this, I think to me, this four-year process with this watershed snapshot, um, you know, it's kind of like just the beginning now. I mean, we went through this process, it gave, it gave us a lot of, uh, tools and resources and things that we can use to take this and move forward you know you don't go through a process like that like this and invest mm -hmm. this much time and energy into building this and then and well, then at the end just throw up your hands and go oh, so what now <laughs> i think we know what now yeah. and we're going to try and move forward with this and talk uh, we're we're currently uh, starting just in its infancy having discussions and conversations with the community out in Mauna Lua. Um, and see how do we want to move forward based off of what we've learned and the resources we have now through this this four-year snapshot hmm. process. Uh, and one example, as I just kind of talked about, was water quality. I think there's a consensus that, yeah, we, a lot of people, we do want to look at water quality, uh, water runoff issues, and, and start to uh, see how we best can possibly address that with the ultimate goal of improving our water quality out there uh, and, and taking measures to uh, you know, address water runoff issues. So, Fantastic. Yeah. And Lila, how would people, uh, you know, that might have an interest in doing their own ahupua'a selfie, how would they learn about the process that you all used? 
Thank you, John. Um, the best way is that since we've been working so closely with Mauna Loa, Haena, and Haula, we realized there was value there in creating a community-friendly guidebook okay. that would allow you know, other communities to go through the same process if they would like to, Super. or be able to continue the snapshots over time. Mm -hmm. So we're almost finished publishing that wow. with um, Kimo's help and your help and others. Um, so we're super excited to launch that, and that'll allow people to open up and create their own selfies, really. Well, where would people be able to access that? Um, Hawaii Conservation Alliance has a website where okay. all of these um, tools and pictures you've been seeing, some that haven't been on here, some geo uh, GIS tools, free communication tools are actually all on the Hawaii Conservation Alliance website, okay. hawaiiconservation.org backslash community snapshot. Community snapshot. And okay. we will, you know, post that later. But if you can get to this page, Hawaii Conservation oh, Alliance .org backslash community snapshot, you'll okay. find the posters, the infographics, the fact sheets, information about our conference every year. You get the URL there at the bottom exactly. of the screen. Exactly. Yeah. And when we have the guidebook finished, we will post it there too. So, so. Lila, would people be able to download Kimo's snapshot of Mauna Loa and take exactly. a look? Okay. Exactly. Okay. They'll also be able to look at historical imagery of wow. Mauna Loa and how it's changed from the past to the present mm -hmm. in that GIS resource we mentioned, uh, oh. Watershed Health sort of data portal of everything. And there's pictures there of what each of these streams wow. and aupua and valleys look like. Yeah. How that development in that pink area right, has right. spread over time. Yeah. And just the last few seconds, I wondered if both of you might just speak to maybe one uh, hope that you have for the future of Mauna Loa. Well, I mean, I'll write a whole list. <laughs> <laughs> What's something that really stands out in your mind that maybe in 50 years you'd like to see different <coughs> on that snapshot, that next selfie? Um, boy, I'd like to see, uh, well, for my, for, for, from my perspective, one of my pet peeves, there's a, there's a lot of different things, that, and I think there's a lot of different people, you get different answers from everybody, but I want to see, I want to see us address the water out there uh, and do things on land to improve uh, and address water runoff issues. So ultimately, not only seeing improvements on land, but also seeing improvements in the ocean out there. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that, I, that is the best vision that we could end with, that beautiful uh, future vision for Mauna Loa. I want to thank everyone that was able to join us today uh, we hope that you'll come back next time. Special mahalo to Lila and Kimo. We'll see you all again here at Mauna Loa Past, Present, and Future. Mahalo. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha.